Hey there, Sugar Snaps. Welcome to the Textile Indie YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Brittany, and here on YouTube, I share tutorials and inspiration in spinning, natural dyeing, basketry, and other fiber arts. The project that I'm sharing with you today is one that I've been working on for a long time. This is a project that I started by spinning the yarn, and then I naturally dyed it and then knitted it into a shawl and I'll go over more of that process soon. If you wanna see the videos on my spinning process and choosing the dyes and naturally dyeing this yarn, you can find links to those videos in the description below. Because I've been working on this project for several months, some of this footage is back from the summer. I'm so excited to show you the finished shawl. It's not totally finished. I still need to block it and weave in the tails, but it's off the needles, and that's a step that I wasn't sure I was going to reach for a while there. I got a new ball winder and swift and I just got it in the mail. Do a little unboxing. I'm pretty excited. Scissors. Okay. This is looking suspiciously like it's going to require some assembly. Holy smokes. Okay. This is the little loop that the end of the yarn goes into. Hand winder wheel. Okay. And now I gotta figure out how this goes together. And it is supposed to come with a Swift, which is not in this box. So I'm hoping that's still coming in the mail. I got my umbrella swift the next day so I started opening it up and got it all unpacked and then realized that the swift part, the umbrella stand part, one of the pieces was broken off so I needed to do an adjustment. But again, more assembly to do so I put the pieces together, figured out how it was going to work and then I got some wire and did a quick fix on the upper umbrella arm to make sure that it would work. Well I'm officially ready to start winding my balls of yarn. I am painting my kitchen cabinets and and um, decided to work on this in between coats of paint so I have not bothered to um, wash off other than my hands. So I uh, whacked my head on the top of the shelf that I painted and therefore I will be removing paint from there and then I hit my shoulder. <sighs> the life of home improvement. This is my kitchen project. All these cupboards were blue. This color right here and I am working on turning them all white like these guys. Now to yarn skein making. Oh not yarn skein, yarn ball winding. It's not turning fluidly. Still I'm figuring that out. May need a little bit of oil. And then I pull the ball off like this and that yarn tucks into the middle and then the rest of the yarn winds to the outside. And there I have a nicely rolled ball of yarn. Well, I got all of my skeins turned into balls of yarn and I'm ready to start knitting. So I have my knitting needles and my pattern. Take a look at the uh, pattern, kind of look it over and see what is ahead of me and then start knitting the shawl. I'm so excited to be at this point in the project. I'd spend kind of a long haul to get just to here and the knitting is going to take a long time as well. So here we go. I don't like my yarn colors. <laughs> oh my gosh. So all of the effort in spinning that yarn and dyeing it and I have knitted a section. I'll show you what I have so far. The purple is cochineal, the blue is indigo, and the light brown is avocado. And I don't like how flat it is. 
it just looks i don't know what i was thinking it was going to happen because i dye them a solid color but um the spin cycle yarn that dre renate's renee knits pattern uses is dappled and so has a lot of variegation and my some of my balls of yarn have some nice variegation these ones don't also not a huge fan of the color color combination i chose with the blue and purple so need to think about that but I kind of have this pit in my stomach. My project isn't going the way I've dreamed about for so long, kind of a feeling. And so I'm sitting here just trying to come up with a solution. I really love this project, but it's kicking my butt as far as um, technicality and getting exactly what I want rather than just kind of going along with whatever happens. I've come up with a couple of solutions to my problem, one of which being over dyeing some of my yarn and maybe having more colors. Uh, another one would be partially dip dyeing some of the skeins of yarn. So my indigo with yarn, I could dip dye in something that would then mix and make a new color. I really do want to represent the natural dye colors in this piece and have the natural colors show up. I did dabble with the idea of um, spatter dyeing my wool yarn with some chemical dyes, but then I'm like, no, I don't want to do that because I really want to keep with the natural dye palette. What I think my best solution is would be to dip dye some of the yarn, maybe do half the bundle in a different color, see if I can over dye and make some colors. I do have some balls that are slightly variegated like this cochineal and this matter root ball. Um, they're not as evenly dyed, so I'll play off of that and see what my results are. The solution to my color flatness problem was to add more color to the yarns that I had already dyed. So I wanted to show you where I'm at right now. I've done some blue, so indigo and cochineal here, and then avocado and indigo. And then if you can see here, I ended up dip dyeing some of the indigo into cochineal. So I have little drips of purple in my yarn. Let me see if I can find that ball of yarn to show you here. So this, this guy, I half dipped in cochineal. So you can see the blue and the purple and that poked out through here. And I decided that this one was variegated enough. So I left this matter root dye. And I really liked the golden color from the eucalyptus and the weld. So I left that plain. The cochineal number one I left because I really like that color. And I pulled in a new skein of yarn that I had laying around that I had spun a while back and dipped it in weld, left the other half the plain wool color. So this will be some fun variegation. I dipped a skein of the walnut dyed wool in indigo, because why not? Left the avocado the same color. Dipped one of the indigo again in a refreshed bath to make it darker, so I have this dark indigo to play with. Dipped one of the lighter indigos into weld and got this kind of greeny color. These are now the new colors that I'm playing around with. I'm excited with the progress. This is going to take a very long time. This is where I'm at. I'll keep you posted. As I'm binding this project off, I'm realizing how many hours of effort and creativity went into this project to spin the yarn, make the dye baths, naturally dye everything, and get to the point where I could actually knit, and then the hours and hours of knitting, because I knit slowly, and there's always a bittersweet feeling for me when that happens. 
uh, when I get to the end of a project, especially this kind of project where I've been working on it for about a about a year now <laughs> since I started dyeing the yarn or really spinning the yarn. And I'm super stoked to see it in its, in its finished form, but also a little sad that I'm going to be done with it. But I'm already, <laughs> uh, isn't this the way? I'm already coming up with new color ideas for another night shift shawl. So it's not gonna be long, I imagine, before I put another one, or get another one going. And this concludes the knitted section. Well, here she is in her full glory. All of these colors are natural dyes that I combined together and I'm super pleased with how this turned out. I used my bulky weight hand spun so this is much larger than a shawl. It's going to be more of a office blanket for myself and uh, I don't know I'm just really pleased with the representation of all these natural colors. They go so well together even though you might not think necessarily that they would. They just flow really beautifully and I'm super stoked to have this finished. Now my work is to go back in and finish off all these tails, which is not necessarily my favorite part of the project, but a very necessary one. So I'm going to block this, put in the tails, but I wanted to just show you the finished piece before I end this video. Obviously that's the point of watching this. And um, I'm going to be sharing the completely finished shawl on my Instagram. So you can follow me at Textile Indie on Instagram to see the finished photos of this once all the tails are woven in and I have it blocked and it's laying out nice and flat. Right now I have some curling. But Drea Renee Knits, um, the pattern that I use, the night, sh night shift pattern, was a beautiful pattern to follow along with. And this pattern specifically, the night shift shawl, really allowed for a lot of leeway. I did change the needle size and the yarn size and therefore ended up with a really large, very heavy piece. I knew that was going to be the case because my hand spun was, was much more bulky than what the pattern called for. But I'm okay with that because now I have a piece to put in my studio that represents a lot of natural dye colors and I can use this as a cozy blanket when I'm editing videos. Thanks so much for traveling this journey with me. It's been quite a long one to finish this up and it's been a while since I posted the last video about dyeing the yarn. I hope you enjoyed this journey and are inspired to maybe spin, dye, and knit something of your own. I have also linked the pattern to the Night Shift Shawl um, by Dre Renee Knits in the description below if you want to reference that. And until next time, happy making. See you later. <laughs>